Hello everyone. I was asked by one of the viewers on my previous video describing uh, the bow lathe, the home built bow lathe uh, with specifications. You can see that in the upper right. If you uh, are interested, you can click on that link. Uh, one of the questions was, can you show us your face plates and chucks and how, uh, you know, why you made your choice uh, for the thread of that lathe, the thread of the spindle. So uh, for those of you who don't know, this spindle is threaded inch and a half eight TPI. This is a two inch spindle. Uh, I made a DOM tubing with inch and a half eight TPI. I'm going to show you the chucks and the face plates I use and uh, I think you'll be surprised as to one of the, the primary reasons I chose that, that thread. I'll uh, see you in a second. Okay, basically face plates, if you're going to be using them for woodworking, fall under just a, a few categories. One, uh, this category you see in front of you are manufactured face plates. These are actually uh, vintage face plates, if you will. Uh, this is a Powermatic, and I believe these two are Oliver slash Powermatic that will work on either one. The difference here is you can see the amount of step from the from the back edge of the faceplate to the threads uh, from here to there. These have a little bit more. It's a little bit more obvious on that one. Have a little bit more space than than uh, this one here. So uh, they're I mean they're nice. This is a I think a seven and a quarter uh, faceplate cast iron. Nothing special there. That one's a six inch, also cast iron. You can see that that rim is a little bit thinner. Uh, here's another one, cast iron as well, about three inches in diameter. Uh, these you can find on eBay. They're uh, on sale all the time. I, some some of these I bought for ten bucks, and some of these, like the big one, I might have paid twenty, maybe twenty five. Uh, they are available all the time, and sometimes they're in lots. So uh, the decision for making the the spindle thread on my lathe inch and a half eight partially is because of the readily the readily available parts I can find on eBay or even auctions that they powermatic and they made a lot of these lathes and a lot of these face plates so you can find them all the time even yard sales uh, pretty inexpensively next category of face plates are the metal working ones category of face plates are metal working face plates so these three face plates you see here, this is a, um, I think it's about eight and three quarters, uh, almost nine inches. Uh, this one's about seven and seven and three eighths or so. And this one I believe is around five and a half, five, five and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. So what you have here are older metalworking face plates. And you can see by the side here, these are much more substantial. And guess what? This thread and that thread are the same. They're both inch and a half eight. The older uh, Craftsman, Logan, Atlas, um, and maybe a few others that I don't remember off the top of my head had this same thread, inch and a half eight. So you can actually get much heavier duty face plates uh, from eBay for metalworking than you can uh, for regular woodworking face plates. There's a huge difference. I mean, these are extremely rigid. I love these face plates. I use them all the time. Um, typically, I use these on big, heavy chunks. When I put lag bolts in here, I don't have to worry about it. Now, these two are your typical face plates. This is a different flavor of face plate. This is what is referred to a driving face plate, and it's designed to be used with a, a drive dog. And you would put uh, typically oddball shaped objects on here, and it would have a, a collar with a finger on it, and it, they'll be driven by this slot. So I don't use it that way. For me, the fact that this little piece is missing is kind of irrelevant. Um, I still have six uh, sizable bolt holes to use. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I use these. I have a few of these that I use all the time as well. Uh, this little missing piece at the speed that, we're, that you're turning for the size of the stuff I do is really irrelevant. It, it isn't, uh, does not throw it off enough by off balance. And you can see that these here, are these sides are actually thickened that kind of compensates for what's missing out of here. So surprisingly, they're, they're actually quite well balanced. Face plate, or I should say face plate look-alike, is this guy right here. This is also meant for metalworking lathes, um, and it, it appears, by all means, uh, appears to be a face plate. This is, in fact, not a face plate. This is a backing plate, and it's designed to be used on a chuck. This one's about... Mm, six inches, five inches, somewhere in that neighborhood. 
uh, it's, it's designed to be bolted to a chuck. That's why it only has three bolt holes in it. And it has this little step. So the way this works is you typically take this backing plate, and they're usually full, and you uh, machine this groove. Now this one has already been machined for a chuck, a chuck I do not have. So I got it as a face plate. However, uh, and, and it, uh, knowing that it was not a face plate, it's a backing plate. But you can always use this to your advantage by turning a small recess in your piece. If um, if you have a, uh, you can see it there. If you have a uh, plate work that you want to do, maybe you need a 12 inch face plate. You can turn a little recess, and it will actually center right on here. And you can put three heavy uh, lag bolts or even bolt it all the way through if you need to. So this is actually quite a useful um, uh, piece as a faceplate or more of a faceplate adapter. Now, the interesting thing about all these faceplates that we looked at is that they are all inch and a half eight. I picked them all up from eBay at a basically discounted price. Uh, what you see here... I may have paid $100 for all of these combined. So uh, you can definitely get a discount uh, by looking for these parts. They are all inch and a half eight. There's nothing special about it. It was a very common thread uh, back in the, the day when they made metalworking lathes with, uh, with threaded spindles. Uh, metalworking lathes are not that way anymore. There we are. The, they don't make them that way anymore. Okay. Uh, the next category of faceplate is the homemade uh, version which you can see here this is a mold for my Captain America shield if you're interested in that there'll be a link in the upper right hand corner uh, you can look at how we we turn this Captain America shield uh, if it looks like it's made out of two by fours that's exactly what it's made out of but uh, this here is a homemade faceplate uh, it's about uh, just under 13 inches in diameter 3 8 7 inch uh, piece of steel there welded to a nut you can buy nuts to fit your lathe uh, all day long. You can just get them anywhere. Uh, they're, they're not hard to find nuts that will fit your lathe. I know some guys are talking about epoxying them. I would prefer a piece of steel with uh, welded in place and you can see there is no shortage of bolt holes there to uh, apply them. The one thing you need to pay attention to is whenever you weld two pieces of steel together, uh, the welding itself will pull uh, the material. So what I did is I have a, no, a spare spindle that I have the, that I picked up with, with the same thread from eBay for uh, hardly anything that's even worth mentioning. And so I use that, uh, I keep it at my desk at work, and whenever I make one of these, I will take and put my spindle in it and put that whole assembly into um, a metal working lathe and skim the back surface. So that makes this surface perpendicular to the axis of the faceplate. So I don't have any issues with wobbliness or being out of balance or anything like that. So you can make your own or have them made and uh, you just gotta make sure that they don't chuck it up here. You wanna have a spindle located in here in order to uh, get uh, your the face of your faceplate perpendicular to the axis of your spindle and your and your faceplate. So uh, this one is, is going to be on here for a little while uh, until we we uh, finish making all those Captain America shields. But um, that's another uh, useful tool if you're interested in having them made. If you know somebody who knows somebody, you can probably have them made for free. Um, but uh, uh, this one didn't cost me anything. I think I bought the, the nuts for five bucks or whatever they were. But I needed something a little bit bigger and there it is. Uh, this piece here is 26 inches. And that is about uh, half that diameter, about 13. Next up uh, are chucks. Last but most definitely not least is the chuck category. So my primary chuck is this one right here. This is a, a Vicmark VM150. It is the biggest woodworking chuck I could find. And uh, I wish they made a bigger one, honestly. It, uh, it weighs about 10 pounds. Pretty, pretty nice. I have uh, about five sets of jaws, including the biggest one they make, which will grip uh, just a little slightly under 10 inches. So very useful. And I use I use those all the time. This is my last piece. Um, I, I think the last thing I used to make this was the the uh, crotch bowl, the off-center crotch bowl. If you're interested in looking at that, there'll be a link in your upper right. Uh, very interesting piece to do off-center. This truck handled it beautifully. 
Uh, no complaints there. Uh, I might be getting another one just to have these jaws permanently set up. But uh, this over here, as you can see, is a slightly different animal. Uh, this is actually a metalworking three-jaw chuck. What's nice about this ch chuck is that it has removable jaws, as you can see there. It is a, a scroll chuck, and there's a key for it. And uh, don't let the rustiness fool you. This this chuck is only a brand. I bought it brand new for a hundred bucks. Brand new for a hundred bucks, and uh, it's been sitting on the shelf. I use it once in a while for oddball things, uh, but it but it was brand new. So. Uh, works great, grips great if you need to throw a piece of aluminum in there to do any kind of turning or a piece of copper or, or what have you. Um, I, I use it for things around the house if I need to polish a shaft or, or you know, do something with a piece of dowel, uh, you know, a nice round piece of dowel, I'll just stick it right in here. And as you can see, there is plenty of throat. It is, it is very, t t it's hard to describe just how big this chuck is. It weighs between 50 and 60 pounds. I don't have a scale, but it is extremely heavy. I cannot lift it with one hand. What I'm going to do, though, is turn it around for you. This is a metalworking chuck. And for those of you who are not familiar, a metalworking chuck, and you can see this little uh, backer plate uh, here. It's about 5 eighths of an inch, maybe 3 quarters. Metalworking chucks, uh, they, the way they come is they come plain. The chucks are plain. Uh, you can find some older chucks for Atlas or South Bend or Logan or, or one of those that the chuck itself is threaded but but nowadays that is not common so what you have here is a backing plate similar to the one i showed you earlier uh, that i bought probably for i want to say forty dollars that was big enough for this again forty dollars for a backing plate of this heaviness um, you cannot buy that in for a metal for a woodworking lathe so uh, again these are ebay finds uh, they're not American made but for the, this purpose uh, they are plenty big and and durable and, uh, uh, and they, they've worked out fine never had a, haven't had a problem with them so <clears throat> the way it works is you take and you put your spindle uh, I'm gonna use this piece of threaded rod you take and you put your put your spindle uh, put your your backing plate on your spindle of your lathe you cannot do this on a woodworking lathe but this is how it works theoretically then you take and you machine a facing cut off that face to make the plate true and perpendicular to your spindle. And then you make a step on there. The back of this chuck has a recess. So you make a step and you um, make it fit that recess very, very tightly. And then, of course, you uh, drill your holes and these three bolts hold that chuck in place. And believe me, there are plenty. So you see another three, a set of three holes here. What happens is this this backing plate is very well seated into the chuck. So if you ever need to remove it for any reason, you just take these bolts out from here and you put them in here and it will jack this plate off. It will just separate the two. Otherwise, you can't separate them. So these are uh, quite useful chucks. Again, I bought this for less than your, your um, lower end woodworking chuck. Again, you may not ever need this. Uh, I, I have had use of it a few times, so for me it works great. These jaws are removable and reversible. And what's also nice about this, because I know where these are, I can make any jaws I want for any purpose and bolt them right in here. So uh, quite useful uh, to have uh, as far as chucks are concerned. So that's a metalworking chuck. And then this is the Vicmark woodworking chuck. Keep in mind that the Vicmark woodworking chuck is the biggest chuck you can find uh, for woodworking. Huge difference here in availability. This combined cost me less than just the bare chuck. Uh, if you if you know anything about Vic Marks, this is a v, uh, VM150. You can look that up. It's I believe it's about $300. It's a nice chuck. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice chuck. The jaws, of course, will set you back a little more with all the different sizes. But $150, $300. Bucks. Uh, you can't use this for bowls uh, in the traditional way, but it has its uses. Um, there's a few other chucks that are, are in the works, some custom pieces, then you'll see some videos on that in the near future. Thanks for watching.